Hey, college algebra people. Um, here's our lesson number four. Uh, this will be our final lesson um, of this current unit. Then we'll move on to the next unit. There won't really be a test since how do you do that with remote learning? So uh, make sure you're keeping up with the online um, Schoology quizzes. Okay, remember that your CT grade can only go up but your CCA grade can go down. Um, so to make sure you still get that CCA credit, please make sure you're logging in, uh, doing the Schoology quizzes, getting help as needed. So let's go ahead and get started into graphing rational functions. Um, not terribly difficult. So this is what one looks like. Now, it seems kind of weird. Uh, it's pretty much just always going to be some variety of this. Okay, it's either going to be the one that we have in this picture where it like slopes down and then that way. Maybe it's the reverse, but it's always going to look one of those. It's going to be opposite uh, corners. Um, there's going to be a horizontal asymptote, a vertical asymptote, a center of sorts, and sometimes that moves around. So I'm just going to show you how to find certain points, figure out, you know, is it going to be that version or that version um, once you have your points figured out. So here's a couple other examples. The one on the right is like what I just showed you. You know, this one just has a center. You can kind of see it's been shifted around a bit instead of being at the origin. Uh, the one on the left is a little more complex looking one. We're not going to do ones like that, but you can kind of see that it doesn't really have a center anymore, but we have some asymptotes going on. Um, you can kind of see how it's divided. It still alternates. Okay, we have the top, we have the bottom, we have the top again. So not really going to worry about those uh, do the remote learning, but that's what, you know, the potential of what it could look like. Now, the so step-by-step, step, what I want you to try and do, that I'll walk you through a few, is step one, find and graph the asymptotes, holes, zeros, and y-intercept. So these are the things from the last lesson that were covered. Essentially, you factor the top and bottom and see what you have. Okay, and then on this, we graph those. And then you sketch the approximate shape given the known information found in number one, and then we put a circle for each hole found in number one. So really number one is the big step, number two and three um, just kind of follow suit. So let's look at one. Let's go, so sketch the graph of f of x equals 2x minus 1 over x by hand. Um, this one can't really be factored, okay? Um, if it were a quadratic top and bottom, we could factor it. This one, you can't, so we're just going to leave it as is. So what we need is our vertical asymptotes. I forgot how to spell asymptote all of a sudden. I'm just going to go with this. We need our horizontal asymptote. not going to spell it out again. Um, we need our x-intercepts, if there are any. We need our holes if there are any um, and those four things should give us our graph so remember the vertical asymptotes is what would ever make the bottom equal zero if it's factored it's kind of easy to do our bottom is just x on this one and so what would make it equal zero well it's zero so that's all you got to do there okay for the horizontal asymptote, that is where we have to look at the cases. So for the horizontal asymptote, all we look at is the highest degrees. And if they are equal, you make a fraction of the coefficient. So 2 over 1, which is 2. So we have our vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Okay. X-intercepts whatever makes the top equal zero. So if you're unsure, set the top equal to zero and solve it. So 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half. And then holes 
is anything that can be factored and canceled, but this one can't be factored, nothing is going to cancel, so there are no holes. So this is all we need. Make a graph here. Oops. And our vertical asymptote is zero. I'm going to change the color. So it just goes through x equals zero. So vertical up down. Um, horizontal asymptote is two. So horizontal left right. So from here, we just have to decide, um, is it top or bottom on the left? And then that will tell us the opposite for on the right. So one last piece of information we have, let me change the color again, let's go with purple, um, is the x-intercept is one half. So I've got a point there. So a point there tells me that on the right, it has to be on the bottom because I've got a point on the bottom. So on the left, it's going to be on the top because it's just the opposite. If one side's on the top, the other one's on the bottom, and vice versa. So find your asymptotes, find x-intercepts and holes if there are any, and then throw them on a graph. So let's try another one that requires some factoring. So first thing on this one, so sketch a graph, sketch the graph of x squared minus nine over x squared minus two x minus three. And we gotta factor those. Remember we had a lot of practice on factoring, hopefully some of it stuck. The uh, polynomial on top is a difference of squares. So x plus three, x minus three. On the bottom, we need to think to ourselves what multiplies to make negative three and combines to make negative two. So I've got x plus one, x minus three. For most of these, you're gonna have something in common top and bottom that you're gonna wind up canceling. Okay, so if you don't have that, it doesn't mean you did something wrong, but if you do have that, you know, it's good confirmation to know that you're right. So uh, let's do our asymptotes. So the vertical asymptote is what makes the bottom equal zero. Well, before I canceled, I cannot have a negative one, so that's my excluded value, or a three. So my vertical asymptotes are negative one and three. Horizontal asymptotes. Look at the leading coefficients. Both of them are degree two. They both have a one on front, so it's one over one, which is a horizontal asymptote of one. X-intercepts. I have an X-intercept, so the X-intercepts you figure out after you cancel. So in this case, all that's left is X plus three, so X equals negative three is our X-intercept. And the holes is what is canceled. So it's got a hole at three. So this one has a little bit of everything. It's also kind of a worst case scenario. It has two vertical asymptotes. Okay, there's not gonna be one of those on the homework or the, uh, I guess everything's homework on the Schoology quiz, uh, but just so you know how to do it. So first step, graph the asymptote, so vertical asymptote at negative one and at positive three, horizontal asymptote at one, so now if you kind of look at this, it separates the graph into six areas. Okay, top, bottom on the left, top, bottom in the middle, top, bottom on the right. Really, all you need is one point somewhere, and it'll tell you everything you need to know for the rest of the areas. So that point is going to be an x-intercept of negative three. So if I have a point down there on the bottom left, it means that's where my graph is going to be. And it is going to alternate... We have a little parabola looking thing there. And then on the bottom over here. Okay. Also remember you can throw any of these on okay, Desmos, okay. On your graphing calculator. 
helps you help help yourself out. So um, last step holes we have a hole at three. So if I go over to three, let's see, and put a hole. So uh, that's all I got there. Now, actually, hold on a second. I am going to redo my graph a little bit. Sorry, I just corrected myself. Recording these at like midnight, so I'm making a couple mistakes. I only have one vertical asymptote because the negative three is not a vertical, or sorry, the positive three is not a vertical asymptote, it's a hole. It can't be a vertical asymptote and a hole. That makes no sense. So, sorry, let me go back. Since I don't have that one to the right, then all I need to do, sorry if this is confusing, is finish out my graph that way. So it was only one vertical asymptote. That's my bad. Um, but hey, good learning experience. It cannot be a vertical asymptote and a hole. So at three, it is a hole right there. So you put a little circle. Um, I went over to three, up to the line, put a circle. Um, so that was a good learning that if you cancel it, it's no longer a vertical asymptote, it's a hole. So, sorry about that, um, but learn from my mistakes. Let me give you a couple to try. I'll give you the graphs, but I'm not going to give you the overall solutions. Um, so sketch the graphs of each rational function below. Give yourself a try on these. I'm going to go ahead and just graph them. So one axis on each. And let's see. The first one is going to have a vertical asymptote here. So I'm checking my graph that I created. It's going to have a horizontal asymptote at the zero and then let me double check something it's going to be up top and then down below okay that's what your graph should look like for the first one for the second one, it's going to have a vertical asymptote here, um, a horizontal asymptote right about here, and an x-intercept right about here. Let me change to purple, which tells me I'm down here and up here. And we have a hole right about there. So that's what your graph should look like um, when you try those out. So try them out, see how they go, and go from there. Um, that's it for the practice problems on here. Okay, try it out. Try out the uh, the worksheet. Look at the answers. Make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, go on to the Schoology quiz. Make sure you're doing that. Um, come on to the office hours. Ask for help. Email me whatever you need. Okay, just uh, let me know what helps. So, hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy in this weird time, and I'll see you on the other side.